I think we'll start this out with an example. You the filter chain is you're going to have a pass. Oh, you're grabbed by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, right. We might be wrong. We're funny, but not always a pass. designs and exp no I lied haha <laughs> back with <laughs> I don't even know what the hell we're gonna talk about all I know is that we're supposed to talk about something regarding experimentation so let's get into the concept of experimentation as a whole all right so um like many authors and like many people they've we've been behavior analysts of my generation were heavily influenced by Sidman right even those that were a bit above me, if you will, so before me, heavily influenced by Sidman. So one of my favorite things from Sidman is a quote that says, we conduct experiments to find out things we do not know. <laughs> he doesn't have that accent, but um, I just figured it would yeah, impact, mm, right? Um, so why do we do experiments? <laughs> to find out things we don't know. I mean, it's just brilliant, right? So where do you go with this, right? What's the next step? The next thing is, I, what is the, what's an experimental question? Sometimes experimental questions can be different, um, difficult to figure out. You have to be really cautious with your experimental questions. We have to make sure that things are testable. We have to make sure they're blah, blah, blah. All these different criteria, testability and, uh, oh, I don't know, specificity and empirical. And I, I'm not going to get into all that stuff. It's for another, uh, it's for another series of videos that someday before I die, we will get to. Um, and if I don't, then, well, we didn't. So, mm -hmm. And I'm dead. <laughs> I, now I'm talking myself into a circle. Ooh, experimental circles. We don't do those. Um, so that's one of the things we have to be cautious about in experiments. Make sure we're not using. Uh, we're, make sure we're not using circular logic. Uh, but we'll come back to that at another time. Again, probably before I'm dead, if I'm lucky. So experimental questions. What are they? They're the question that you're trying to answer in your experiment. They are the thing that you want to know about, right? So when Sidman's saying that we find out, the experiments find out things, uh, find out stuff that we do not know, right? Uh, have answer questions about things that we don't know, then the, the, the answering thing is about a question, and that question is the thing that you want to know, and that's an experimental question. What effect does a tie have on behavior, <laughs> right? So now we can find out what effect a tie has on behavior if we do an experiment, if we do it in the right way. Now that's kind of tight. There we go. All right, so we could do that, right? We could do, we could find out what effect ties have on behavior using a properly designed experiment, which leads us to experimental design. There's lots of them. I don't have time to get into them in this video and make this video palatable and interesting and brief enough for you to watch the whole thing. But we will do it in another video, including ABAB designs, ABA designs, AP designs, ABABD, ABABABA designs, reversal designs, and all sorts of designs that are just kind of popping into my head right now. Lots and lots and lots of different research designs. Why are they important? They're important because different types of research designs allow you to draw different conclusions. Okay? So these different conclusions well, sorry, they allow you to answer different questions in different ways, which can lead you to different conclusions. And, and I'm getting all ahead of myself. The experimental design technique is the procedures that you use when you conduct your experiment that allows you to draw the, conclu the experimental conclusions. So when you conduct the study, the conditions that you put people through, do you put them through a baseline first? Do you do an intervention phase? Do you bring them back to baseline? Or are you doing other designs where you have an intervention and a baseline and a different intervention, or sorry, a baseline and an intervention and a baseline and an intervention and a baseline and an intervention? There's all sorts of different things we can do. How those work um, is the topic of another video, but that's your experimental design. So when you have a research question, you match your design to it. Some designs don't work with certain research questions. Again, we'll get back to that. Um, so we have to go, well, what's in a research question? Well, there's a couple of things, dependent variables and independent variables. So we're going to focus on independent variables first. Independent variables are um, the tightness of the tie. All right, so it's rather tight at the moment. Let's see if I tighten it up a little bit. Let's see if you watch the color. There we go. Now we're getting a really good tight tie. I'm not messing with my voice. The tie is messing with my voice, all right? So if the independent variable is the tightness of my tie, I'll tighten up a little bit more because it gets loose as I talk. All right, so if the tightness of my tie, I suppose the dependent variable would be my behavior. You could also probably measure the color in my face about now. I can't personally see it because we don't have a monitor, but I can feel that it's getting rather warm and my voice is getting rather scratchy. All right, so the independent variable, tightness of the tie, dependent variable, my behavior. Get off, get off of me. All right, so there we go. Uh, whew. 
So as always, we're going to go back to the basics. Independent variables are the things that you want to know about. They're the things that affect behavior. They're the things that you want to, to see what effect they have. If I jack everybody up with a really tight tie, does that do the same thing to everybody? Or do some people like pass out and hit the floor? Um, all sorts of interesting questions. What happens if you jack up the temperature in the room? What happens if I punish you with this? All right, those are all independent variables. The is the independent variable, right? The dependent variable is what happens. It's what you measure. In our field, it's your behavior, right? So other things that we're gonna talk about, so that's independent, dependent. Dependent is dependent upon the independent. That's another way to think about it. Um, the subject, the what's the subject with us? Behavior. Subject, the subject is often the person, but the subject of study is behavior, and anyway, you get the idea. So the subject in the study could be a person, but you're, the subject of the study could be behavior, right? So notice how I said that, of the study and in the study, there's your key. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here? Oh, the experimental setting, the environment under which the experiment occurs. Um, this has to do with external validity and all sorts of other types of validity. Uh, so we want to make sure that if we're going to do a study in, in a lab, that we also maybe replicate that study out in the real world to see if it has the same sort of effect. So experimental setting is drastically important. Um, why is that important? Because it has to do with the control of extraneous variables. When we bring an experiment into the laboratory, what we're really trying to do is control for things like this. <laughs> okay? All of those things on that list are extraneous variables that might affect behavior, okay? Let's go back to our example of tightening up the tie. All right, hold on, I gotta grab the right one. All right, so that's our independent variable. Oh, shoot. Um, so what are the things that could affect the independent variable, the tightness of the tie? What, what sorts of things could have an effect on my behavior? What are possible other scenarios that are going on in this particular environment that could explain my behavior other than the tightness of this tie? All of those. In other words, what you're seeing is anything and everything that you didn't control for is appearing on that list, which basically means everything in the darn world, whatever the heck it is, it's all there. Those are extraneous variables. They are concomitant variables and they are confounding variables. They mess with your ability to draw conclusions about the independent variable. Let's see if I can just straighten it up. There we go. Uh, no, not as good. Sorry, it wasn't a very effective intervention. All right, there we go. So I'm good. We're back to normal. Um, so, um, so we try to control extraneous variables, confounding variables, concomitant variables, they're all the same thing. We control those um, in the laboratory in really tight, highly controlled settings to draw conclusions about the independent variable. And then we go test that stuff out in the real world um, and see if those same types of things happen. I'm trying to think, is there anything else here? No, replicability, baseline. We need to make comparisons. We'll get into baseline logic in another video. I don't know. Hold on one second. I'm gonna check my notes. <laughs> gonna be fuzzy. I was hoping the camera would adjust, but it didn't. So um, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna come back and talk about baselines in the later. That was a video on behavior analysis. If you like it, please share it. Please subscribe. Please donate. We'd like to eat. I'm hungry.